Hello again, my friends. This is Kanita, and I greet you warmly in the name of our risen Lord, Yeshua, Almighty God. And I welcome you back to the podcast on this Sunday evening. It's getting kind of late now. The, the heat wave is over. We've had just a touch of rain. There's some cool breezes coming in the window. And I thought it was a, a nice time, a good time for another devotional as we prepare for the evening. You know, my friends, in all lambs, the longings of the soul, the pangs of the heart, find expression in sighs and sobs, in moans and groans, an outcrying of the spirit before the living God in tones such as mere nature could never produce. The word sigh, for instance, has a much stronger force in its biblical usage than in our modern speech. You see, years ago, it signified a deep lament of the soul rather than as we use it now as simply a mark of selfishness or perhaps a bad attitude. The Word tells us that the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage and then it explains its meaning in the very next verse. Verse, there we go. (laughs) And God heard their groanings. Their sighings expressed their suffering and sorrow under the oppression of their Egyptian taskmasters. So again we read the sorely afflicted Job. For my sighing cometh before my meat, and my roarings are poured out like water. So by prayer sighs, my friends, I'm talking about those agitations and eruptions of the soul which are virtually synonymous with groans and sobs and for which we can find no other expression. In the word, a sigh is an indefinable vocalization, an amorphous cry of the soul. We're all familiar with this because the truth is Life often comes at God's people kind of fast. And there are many, many times when we simply cannot find the language suited to our experience or our emotions, where our thoughts and our words fail us, though. Here, the burdens or even the joys of our hearts find their expressions in these sighs and cries. The workings of a believer's heart under the constant pressure of self against the constant winds of temptation and opposition and under the burden of a society that detests and shuns us are often described in the scriptures in this way. Sometimes he is said to be in heaviness or to cry out of the depths to roar, to be overwhelmed, or to be distracted. The tossings and anguish of his soul are depicted as groanings. The groanings of the believer are not only expressions of desperation, grief, or even sorrow, but also of a deeply felt joy in the intensity of his spiritual experience and desires and of his constant panting after God and his yearning, his yearning to at last see him face to face. Such percolations of the soul, my friends, prompted by the spirit of the living God, are peculiar, even isolated to the believer. And by this divine turbulence, the believer may know that he walks with his risen Savior. If he finds himself groaning, over the infections of his heart and those workings of inward corruption which prevent him from perfectly loving and serving God as he longs to do. And we all experience this. Yet this is proof, my friends, proof that a principle of holiness, a divine principle of holiness has been communicated and implanted within our souls. If we mourn over the lustings of our flesh, 
against that seed of holiness. It is only because we are now alive unto the Spirit of Almighty God. The world or the natural man will groan over the common troubles of life, such as financial loss, sickness, pain in the body, or the death of a loved one. But that is only the voice of self. Never does the worldly man weep in secret over the coldness of his heart or the workings of unbelief in his soul. No. These groans and sighs are the evidences of spiritual life, my friends. The pantings of holiness with the hungering and thirsting after righteousness are the natural echoes of the Spirit in response to the presence of God in our lives. They are the sure pledges of our deliverance. They are, in fact, the marks of our union with the living God in Christ Jesus. And He, seer, he sees, He hears, and he, he interprets all of these groans and sighs as the holy incense of prayer. Those sacrifices which are acceptable to him are a broken and a contrite heart. Sobbings of our soul are of great price in the sight of Almighty God. The believer's moans are intelligible, intelligible language in heaven. The Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping, it tells us in the word. And that weeping possesses an appeal unto him. Which the, eloquent, which the eloquence of no earthly words can emulate. Lord, all my desire is before Thee, and my groaning is not hid from Thee. This is the witness of the Spirit and of the Word unto us. Our tears speak to Him of godly sorrow. Our moans as the cries of a contrite spirit. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoner. Here then, my friends, is consolation. God is privy and present to our secret sighs. Christ himself is touched deeply with them and they ascend as petitions to heaven and return to us as a sure witness of his presence. So, my friends, never be ashamed of your tears, your sighs, your moans, or your groans before the living God, for they are in fact the witness of the new life present within your bosom and a pledge of the life to come. Amen. Amen. Well, it's getting late. It's Closing in on midnight, it's about time for me to uh, crawl in between the sheets. <laughs> Four o'clock comes early in the morning, and that's what time the alarm starts going off, because it takes a while for me to roll out. So until then, my friends, have a wonderful, wonderful evening in the name of our risen Lord. And remember, go always, always the strength of the living God, that his strength might always go in you. Until the next time, good night, my friend.